Hello everybody and welcome back to our Automata and Formal Languages class. Um, this is Unit 7 um, in our class and in this unit I would be very much interested in utilizing the new toolbox that we created in the previous unit um, in terms of the um, non-deterministic finite automata to get back to where we left off um, in proving closure properties of the um, class of regular languages um, and regular operations. Uh, remember that we started our theory of computation by formalizing what computation means theoretically writing down the formulation for a device um, or a machine that can compute uh, uh, with a finite set of um, state uh, or rather with a finite memory um, and then we formalize that, that its computation and we called it a deterministic finite automaton and then we went ahead and we um, uh, defined um, the um, language of this automaton as being um, a regular language so a regular language was the um, set of all the strings that some deterministic finite automaton will accept them. Then we showed that, when we, then, then we defined uh, certain properties, cer certain operations on these languages or these sets, union, uh, intersection, complement, um, and then um, the concatenation of two sets um, and the star of a set, a set, and we call these regular operations. Then we said that, hey, the class of regular languages, or the languages that some finite automaton recognizes it, uh, them, is closed under all these operations, and we call them regular languages, or regular operations. Then we started proving this, um, and we did the, the proof for, um, for the complement, we did the proof for the intersection, and the proof for the union. But when we tried to prove that uh, the class of regular languages was closed under the concatenation operation. Uh, we hit a wall. We couldn't. We couldn't go further. The proof was too complicated to do with deterministic finite automata. Um, then we looked around to find a different toolbox that could help us do this. Uh, we defined non-deterministic finite automata, which were the generation or generalization of um, deterministic ones, and now we are at the point that now we can utilize these non-deterministic finite automaton to perform our proofs. Um, and, and so, um, just to go back again um, to tell you what uh, non-deterministic finite automaton were, um, uh, they are a, a, a very useful concept that uh, could help us exactly um, uh, simplify the processes. So, um, non-deterministic finite automaton basically diff is, are different from the deterministic ones in that in deterministic finite automaton, the outgoing transitions for each symbol out of each state is determined. In that, when you're in each state, there is exactly one outgoing transition for um, each symbol in your alphabet, so it is determined. Uh, determined. Uh, with non-deterministic automaton, your machine has choices in that when it's in its state, it has a choice of either staying in that state for each symbol, or um, well, let me put it this way, this other way. Um, your machine, when it's in, 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 in every state, it may have choices of transitioning for for reading every symbol in the alphabet it may have choices of transitioning namely don't transition at, do, uh, uh, at all for that symbol which basically kills the thread of computation um, or transition to one state or transition to more than one state um, upon reading every symbol in the string and also um, your machine has even another additional choice to do, and that is to transition without reading any symbol from your uh, from your from your alphabet or from the string. So, in a non-deterministic finite automaton, the idea is that 
whereas in deterministic ones, if you were in state A, then you had exactly one outgoing transition per symbol in your alphabet to state B. In non-deterministic, um, so this is for DFAs, in NFAs, you have this choice of, if you're in state A, to not transition at all. Which effectively kills a thread of computation on a symbol. So that's one way to do it. Or, on a symbol, transition to more than one state. Transition to any state, or rather any set of states. And also, uh, so for, for each symbol, so for a symbol alpha, for example, you may have multiple outgoing transitions that go out, um, including transitioning to yourself, right? Or to just transition without reading any alphabet, any symbol. So these will be in the form of your epsilon transitions. So this means that your machine has the choice of transitioning from a state without reading symbols. So effectively, an, an NFA is basically a generalized DFA. Um, you can be in a state, and if you read an alphabet, you can decide not to go anywhere. Or if you're in a state and you read an, a symbol from the uh, string, an alphabet symbol from the string, you may decide to go to one state or to end up going into multiple states. Or your machine also has the choice of, when it's in a state, to go to a different state um, without reading anything from, uh, from, from, from the input string. And so this basically generalizes it. And we realized that this, um, these two machines, the deterministic automaton and the non-deterministic automaton, are effectively the same, uh, the same thing, in that um, when um, a non-deterministic automaton uh, accepts a string, there is an equivalent to that automaton that accepts that same string. In fact, if there is a language that is recognized by NNF and NFA, there is at least one, there may be multiple, but there is at least one deterministic automaton equivalent to it that recognizes that exact same language. Um, and then, as a result of this, we ended up in, 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 in uh, discovering and, and, and proving that, um, that um, a language is regular if some non-deterministic finite automaton recognizes it, if and only if some deterministic non-deterministic finite automaton recognizes it. Which brings us to a very important closure, uh, or to a very important property for us to, to be able to, to work with. And, um, and, uh, and, 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 and now what we are going to do is that we are going to revisit now back the idea that we had earlier um, that the class of regular languages are closed under regular operations, and now we can prove that, uh, them uh, not only much, much simply, much more simply, but that, um, in, in fact, um, certain um, uh, um, proofs um, involving deterministic finite automaton would be very, very close to impossible for us to formulate, uh, whereas for uh, utilizing their non-deterministic counterparts, the proof become almost intuitive. So um, I'm going to, to start back and, and to go and revisit our uh, closure of the union operation under the union operation of the regular languages. Um, so the theorem, again, that we are talking about, uh, we're going to reformulate these theorems. It's exactly the same theorem we saw earlier, um, uh, but we call it theorem 1.45. And um, it states that the class of regular languages is closed under the union operation. What that means is that if you have two regular languages, a sub 1 and a sub 2, the union of these two languages is going to be a set that will also be regular. It will be also a regular language. Now, if you remember from the proof, and I'm actually going to very quickly go over and redo that proof, if you have 
seen, and I've already done this twice, um, earlier in the Unit 4 and Unit 5, I believe, um, of the class. You may feel free to skip this part. Um, I think it's going to be the next four or five minutes. Um, but if you haven't, um, uh, or, or it, it still feels funny to you, please stick around and, and, and watch this proof. Um, we did that with DFAs. Now we're going to redo that with NFAs, and you'll see how, how much simpler uh, this proof will be. So the idea here, exactly like what, it, with, what we did with DFAs, is that we uh, take the two NFAs that recognize each of the languages, A sub 1 and A sub 2, and we know that A sub 1 um, is regular, and therefore from corollary 1.40 from the last unit, uh, we know that some NFA recognizes it, and we formulate that NFA. Um, same thing with A sub 2. If A sub 2 is regular, then some NFA recognizes it, we call that N sub 2. And then we combine these two non-deterministic finite automaton, N sub 1 and N sub 2, into another automaton that recognizes um, um, their union. And then we show that that since this automaton's computation is exactly as the computation of the, the a machine that should recognize the union of these two languages, therefore the regular language A sub 1, A sub 2 will be also regular. So we're going to prove this. Um, the proof then um, is going to be uh, the construction of such non-deterministic finite automaton. So now what I'm going to do is just just to have a basis for comparison, how much simpler the NFA proof is compared to the DFA one, I'm going to do the DFA proof again for you here, and then I'm going to proceed with the proof with the NFAs. So, um, so what I want to do is I want to prove that if A sub 1 and A sub 2 are regular, languages, then A sub 1 union A sub 2 is regular. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to suppose that an M sub 1 here DFA. So now just 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 another disclaimer. This is that this that I'm going to show you here on the left side of this line is going to be the the proof with DFA. So I say some DFA M sub 1 recognizes language A sub 1. And then some M sub 2 DFA again recognizes A sub 2. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine M sub 1 and M sub 2 into M, again being a DFA. And then I'm going to show that that M recognizes the um, the A sub 1 union, A sub 2. And therefore, um, since some uh, deterministic finite automaton recognizes this language, this language must be regular. So what I said is that I said let's M sub 1 be Q sub 1 sigma delta sub 1 um, Q sub 1 0 and F sub 1. And then M sub 2 be Q sub 2, eh, sigma, delta sub 2, Q sub 1, Q, Q sub 2, 0, and F sub 2. And I said what I'm going to do is that I'm going to combine M sub 1 and M sub 2, and I'm going to build M to be the finite automaton Q, sigma, delta, Q, 0, and F. And then I went ahead and I constructed every single one of these guys. So I said let, let first, Q be the cross product of Q sub 1 and Q sub 2. This way, if I had some Q sub 1 from this machine and some Q sub 1 from the second machine, then the ordered pair of these two um, state Q sub 1 and Q sub 2s will be a state for my overall machine. So as a result of this, my states would be in the form of Q sub 1 and Q sub 2. Q sub 1 is belonging to Q sub 1 and Q sub 2 is belonging to Q sub 2. So this was my means of simulating computations of the machine M sub 1 and the machine M sub 2 at the same time. Then I said that let the language of the two to be the same, so sigma is equal to sigma is equal to sigma, and I said if sigma 1 and sigma 2 were different, then I would basically take the union of the two, 
then for the transition function, um, I said that now, now the delta will be from q sub 1 cross q sub 2 cross my alphabet sigma onto q sub 1 cross q sub 2, right? So I take a pair of states, one from the first machine, one from the second machine, I pass the alphabet to both of them, and I come up with the new pair of states, one from this first machine and one from the second machine. So then I said now the delta of these guys, so the delta of a q sub 1 and a q sub 2, a pair of states, one from the first machine and one from the second machine, and some alphabet, A, so for every q sub 1 from q sub 1, q sub 2 from q sub 2, and A from sigma, the alphabet. If I pass it into this form, then it should be in the form of a pair, which would be the delta of q sub 1 and A, and the delta, delta sub 1, and the delta sub 2 of q sub 2 and A. Right. So effectively, what that means is that when I read an input alphabet alpha, I mean A, from my string, I pass it to the first machine, and I find where the state goes. And I pass it to the second machine, and I find where that state goes. And I put them in an ordered pair like this. And this would be the state of my new machine. Then for the set of my accept states, so Q or start states, it would be simply a set from the first start state and the second start state. So the start state from the first machine, so this goes from the first machine, and this one comes from M sub 2, the second machine. And that would be the start of my overall machine. And finally, the, the accept states will be a set of pairs of states, q sub 1 and q sub 2, where q sub 1 belongs to f sub 1, um, and q sub 2, uh, rather, or, q sub 2 belongs to f sub 2. Meaning that the set of accept states for my overall machine would be the set of ordered pairs in which at least one or both of the members of these ordered pairs are an accept state from either M1 or M2 or, or from both. Um, and, and this was the construction, the proof that I made. So it actually, I, it was just a quick review of it. Um, I did all the explanation and the details of this construction earlier. And so I, I urge you, if you, if any of these uh, look look unfamiliar to you, please go ahead and, and review those uh, those steps um, uh, from the earlier units. I believe the end of unit four and, and the, or the beginning of unit five, we went over these with the DFAs. It was it was the only means for us to be able to construct it. Now, how are we going to do and utilize non-determinism to to perform this proof? So. Um, we basically suppose that now in, in, in this case, we want to still prove that if a sub 1 and a sub 2 are regular, then their union is regular. So how are we going to do that? We're going to basically suppose that there is some NFA n sub 1 that recognizes um, a sub 1 and there is some NFA n sub 2 that recognizes a sub 2 and we're going to build an n another NFA off of these two n sub 1 and n sub 2 that recognizes these um, the union of the two now what makes this construction incredibly straightforward is the fact that I could, in, in non-deterministic finite automaton, I have the choice of transitioning over epsilon um, transitions or transitioning without reading any symbols. And the fact that I can go to more than one state um, at a time that allows me to perform this computation 
with NFAs much easier than I do I, I did with uh, with DFAs. So here's here's a represent a visual representations of this a visual representation of this proof. In fact, actually, let me change the colors of these guys to blue because blue is like nice, and so we're going to do that. So the representation, the visual representation of this proof is fairly simple. Let's say that N sub 1 is some NFA that has a start state and then it goes to a bunch of states and then it has some accept states and then for NFA N sub 2 will have the same situation that it has a start state, so this is n sub 2, and then it goes to its own transitions, and then some of these guys end up being accept states, right? So we have n sub 1 and n sub 2, and these are NFAs. Now, if you remember with the DFAs, we, had, we still had the same thing. We still had a DFA, for example, this guy, that then it had a bunch of states, and some of them were accept states, and exactly one start state. So we still had in there that same idea that we had these guys with accept states and start states. And so this was the MFA, M, DFA M sub 1, DFA M sub 2. And then we simulated these guys by creating a, a machine, a bigger machine, and this machine basically was something like this, that it had actually a start state that was the start state of both MFAs and, and now this was or DFAs and this was now the start state and then for every intermediate state it had a pair of states a pair of states a pair of states and then we had the transitions of these guys um, taken care of for us so basically we mixed and matched those states just like that and so these transitions these arrows that you have here these were the form of this transition function up there, right? So this was the form of the transition that, that went from a pair of states to another pair of states to another pair of states and so on and so forth. So for the, each, each, in each uh, transition, the input was a pair of states, basically one of these big lumps and an alphabet, and then it would go and simulate the operation of the first one with delta 1, the second one with delta 2, and put them back into a pair. And this was how it, it, we created and we proved with the non-deterministic finite automaton. I pose that the deterministic one is actually much, much simpler. Here's, here's uh, my challenge for you. Two minutes, two seconds to think about it, or five seconds to think about it. And so, ready, set, go. This is the challenge. See if you can do this. Simulate the simulation of n using n sub 1 and n sub 2 here with just one state, one additional state, and two arrows. I'll give you uh, fine, 15 seconds to think about it. How can I build n out of n sub 1 and n sub 2? By just adding one circle and two arrows. And here is the end of that 15 seconds. If you answer this question in 15 seconds, wonderful, big deal, I guess. No, I'm kidding. So if you answer this question, great. Um, if you didn't, just, just, just stick around and you'll see. Here is the solution. I pose that N is this. I just add a state, make it start state, and have it epsilon transition into the start state of the two machines. And I pose that all I needed now to do using non-determinism, I have constructed the NFA N that simulates the two machines N sub 1 and N sub 2 and that this recognizes um, the union of the two languages. Now, as you see here, what allowed me to simulate the two machines N sub 1 and N sub 2 simultaneously 
was the choice that the NFA gave me by transitioning out to the two initial states of N sub 1 and N sub 2. In fact, so that's the multiple outgoing transitions that allowed me to simulate this fact with NFAs. Whereas for the DFAs, since I cannot um, basically pass the symbols to both of these machines, I had to actually create pairs of states from the first machine and second machines, first machine and second machine. So I had to create pairs of states to be able to simulate the, um, the, the machines uh, M sub 1 and M sub 2 deterministically, whereas with the non-deterministic automaton, since I could transition into more than one state, then all I needed to do is basically to create a new start state and then allow it to transition into the start state of the first machine and the second machine with two, two outgoing arrows. And that way, when a, the starting symbol comes in, I would start the, the computation of n sub 1. At the same time, I start the computation of n sub 2. Because if you remember, the branching thing that we talked about earlier, when your string starts, then it's going to branch out into a state that starts, or a thread of computation that starts from q sub 0 1, and another state of computation, or thread of computation, that starts from q sub 0 2. So that allowed me to do that. In fact, what helped me not even to waste an input string or input alphabet to initiate this parallel process is the epsilon transitions. So my initial start state, and we call it Q sub 0, is nothing but a state that immediately once it starts, it transitions into the start state Q sub 0, 1 of, um, rather, let's call it 0, 1, of the, the first machine and q sub 0 2 of the second machine okay so now let's um, let's write this computation down uh, formally to define this machine this is my proof by the way really um, and, and I'll show you that this all this big talk about ordered pairs and deltas cross 1 um, q sub cross q sub 1 cross um, q sub 2 and all that sort of things it becomes it becomes um, incredibly simpler um, to write down. So, so um, uh, first off, n sub 1 is a non-deterministic finite automaton, so it has a q sub 1, it has a set of language, it has a delta sub 1, it has a q sub um, 0, 1 start state, and it has an accept state f sub 1. n sub 2 is also a q sub 2, uh, Five tuple, a, a non-deterministic finite automaton. So it, it has its own set of states. It has. I'm I'm, so I'm I'm using the same alphabet symbol. That's no problem. I mean, if, if sigma one and sigma two were di were different alphabet, I, I basically take their union. Um, it has a transition function delta sub two, a start state q sub zero two, and a set of accept states f sub two. And let me just um, write really quickly what's the delta transitions. So basically what happens here, the delta transitions for delta sub 1 goes from q sub 1 cross sigma to q sub 1. So effectively, the delta of some q sub 1 i and some alphabet is going to be some q sub 1. Um, or rather, let's, let's stick with our transition. I1 is going to be J1. Let me just make it a little, a little bit easier to, to be, uh, uh, dis, dis, discriminate, distinguish. So the, the first index here is the machine, uh, is the state number, and the second index is the machine it comes from. So see, the start state is 0, 1 from the first machine, 0, 2 from the second machine. So the ith state of the first machine is going to be 0, uh, it's going to be I1. Uh, I1. The ith state of the second machine is going to be Q sub I2. So the delta sub 1 of Q sub I1 over, let's say, some alphabet alpha, some string member alpha, is going to be Q sub J1. Okay, so delta 2 here then is from Q sub 2 cross um, sigma over to Q sub 2. So to write it down equation in, in equation, I say if I'm in state Q sub I from the second machine and I read some alphabet beta, then I go to Q sub J from the second machine. Um, 
So that's how I write it. Q sub i2 is the ith state of the second machine and transitions into some j state of the uh, second machine. So that's how I formulate them. So then uh, my, my uh, construction, my n, is going to be very nicely set. n is going to be a q, a 5 tuple q, sigma, delta, q sub 0, its start state, and f, the set of its accept states. So the way that it's going to be written is that then in, 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 my, in my n, in my um, constructed machine, I'm keeping all of the states of n sub 1, and, and these guys are q, right? The states of n sub 1. So q is equal to q sub 1 is equal to states, or rather set of states of n sub 1. And then q sub 2 are these guys. Um, so it is set of states of n sub 2. And then I'm going to add this at q0 to it. So then q, the set of my states for my machine here, n, is going to be q sub 0, um, which is, or rather, set q sub 0, um, union with all the states from the first machine, union with all the states from the second machine. Right? So there's no cross product or any bloating of my, uh, my states. Um, all I need is to keep the states of my first machine, the states of my second machine, add my own start state, and the union of all these is going to be the set of my new um, uh, NFA, um, non-determinacy finite automaton N. The um, sigma is going to be the sigma, which is so languages are the same. Uh, um, alphabet so that's no problem um, there um, and um, now the um, computation so so then so that's that then the three the delta of my uh, of my transition is going to be fairly straightforward then it goes from Q reads alphabet symbols and then creates a set Q from there, and I'm going to I'm going to expand. I'm going to talk about this more. I'm going to write it out. Um, now the start state of my machine is going to be Q sub zero, and the accept state of my machine is going to be the union of the accept states of both of those machines. So F is going to be F sub one union F sub two. So whenever I'm in an, in an, in an um, um, so when my string is f finished, then if uh, if I'm in, in in any state, accept state, either from n sub one or n sub two, my overall machine will accept. So that way, it computes and accepts um, the union of the two languages. Um, remember, when in in this case, see the accept state here. If you want to con con contrast it, it should be, it would have been f sub one cross q sub two. Um, um, union Q sub 1 cross F sub 2 um, in, in, in the DFA. So this is in the DFA case. And as you see, in the NFA case, it's much more straightforward. F sub 1 union F sub 2, basically the union of the accept states of both languages, both, both uh, machines will be the set of accept states of my overall machine. Now, how am I going to do this computation? How does this delta transition work? Remember, look at this. The delta transition for the DFA one is ugly. Um, it's, it has um, ordered pairs of states from machine 1, states from machine 2, and then co computes that way. The delta transitions for my NFA is actually much, much simpler. If you're in the state Q and you read A, an input, alf an input alphabet, so basically for every Q from your set of states Q from here, and for every um, A from your language, basically, what you'll do is that you'll basically look at one of these four possible cases. Um, is Q your Q sub 0? And if it is, is alpha equal to the empty string? 
second case is is Q Q sub zero and is alpha any language uh, or any st string other than uh, the empty um, string um, then is Q one of the members of Q sub one or is Q one of the members of Q sub two okay so basically these four um, statements, these four equations would specify how your machine computes. Now let's take a look at the easy ones. The easy ones are down here. What happens if I'm in one of the states in Q sub 1? Then I will take the transition of the first machine. So I take the N sub 1 transition. So these guys have the delta sub 1 transitions. So if Q, if the Q, the states I'm in, is one of the states from Q sub 1, then I take the Q sub 1's transition. If Q is one of the states from Q sub 2, then I take the Q sub 2's transitions. This is fairly, fairly straightforward. If I'm in the start state and I haven't started my computation yet, I haven't read anything from the string, then I would go to both start state of the first machine so it's going to be q sub 1 0 and q sub 0 2 right so this basically this part here let me just draw this with, with the green so this part here this part here this is effectively these alpha transitions there and that alpha transition there right and also if I'm in the Q sub 0 here. For any other alphabet letter, I'm just going to go to the phi, to the, to the empty, uh, empty set. Meaning that, so, so what, what does this mean? Let me just break these, these four, four, four down for you. This means that before reading, go to start of n sub 1 and n sub 2. This guy means for other um, string symbols don't do anything from Q sub zero, right? So, which means that the thread of computations that start from Q sub zero for all the other letters of your alphabet, it's going to go to the phi. So, it's going to still process them, but nothing is going to happen out of this state, which basically then leaves the computation of your non deterministic finite automaton to basically take care of the important processes that come from this guy and this guy. So, the delta ones process those and delta twos process these guys. So then if Q is one of the members of your first or your second um, um, alphabet, uh, I mean uh, NFA, then you basically take their, their appropriate computation and then you're done. In fact, if, if, if I were you and actually, or rather if I were me, um, and I'm asking you to, to perform this proof for me, I really don't care much about to be honest with you, um, to, about the technicalities of this phi and non-epsilon transition out of Q sub zero, um, you still have to write it down, um, and it is basically um, a technicality to make sure that you don't have any outgoing transitions out of Q sub zero for any other alphabet letter except for the empty string. So the Q sub zero that I added here, it has no other purpose than to effectively kickstart the process of n sub one and n sub two in parallel. And after it's done that, it's done its job. And that thread of computation can basically um, stop executing. Um, and so this ensures that my machine will waste no time uh, revisiting Q sub zero after the string is started. Um, so, <clears throat> so basically, um, again, just, just, I'm going to go uh, quickly overviewing, um, the proof by construction of the, um, closure property. 
um, of the regular languages under the union operation. Um, I said that, and, and, uh, and on the right-hand side is what we actually did new in this unit. Uh, we said that we have two regular languages, A sub 1 and A sub 2. Since both are regular, some fi non-deterministic finite automaton N sub 1, which looks like the one that I wrote down, down here, accepts it or recognizes it. And then since A sub 2 is regular, regular some N sub 2, which is down here, recognizes it and I wanted to show that a sub 1 and a sub 2 is regular which means that I wanted to show and construct some non-deterministic finite automaton which by the way this n is also an NFA um, that recognizes the union the way that I constructed this automaton was that basically I added a new start state and I made that start state to transition over epsilon uh, transitions into the start states of n sub 1 and n sub 2 and then I wrote the transition diagrams, or rather the transition functions down here. So basically, the, net, the, the, the new set of states is the union of the original set of states with the additional states I added, Q sub 0. Um, the alphabet is, of course, the same. The start state is the new state that I added, uh, which is Q sub 0. And the set of accept states of my new machine is going to be the union of the set of accept states of my original machines. And the delta transition basically set, takes as input one of these states here and a symbol, and then looks and see which one of these four cases it is. If the state is one of the Q sub 1 states, one of the states of N sub 1, it takes the transition function from the first machine, delta sub 1. If the state is one of the states of the second machine, it takes the transitions from the second machine. If the state is my original added state here, my new added state Q sub 0, then for the epsilon transition, it's going to start and go to both start states of the first machine and the start state of the second machines. Remember, for a non-deterministic finite automaton, um, the outgoing could be a set of states, could be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or many states. So here, this is my way of saying that the start when the moment I start the machine, before I'm reading any strings, I'm going to kick into Q sub 0, 1, Q sub 0, 2, uh, which basically is here. So I'm going to kick into Q sub 0, 1 and Q sub 0, 2. And then I ensure that my machine does not process Q sub 0 um, for any other uh, letters in my string. So basically, I make sure that the Q sub 0 would go to nowhere. If basically, or to the M, to the set of empty um, for any of the letters, because once once you kickstart into Q sub zero and Q sub zero one and Q sub zero two, you don't care about Q sub zero anymore. That job is done. So basically, this effectively kills Q sub zero after machine starts after machine n starts starts if i can spell starts starts reading symbols okay so and and, and um um and behold uh, you have the constructed non-deterministic finite automaton that accepts the union of two languages two regular languages out of the finite non-deterministic finite automaton that recognize each of those languages. This is, um, uh, of course, I, I wanted to elaborate and to go over and over and explain you exactly what's happening here with this proof. But obviously, you can see that this proof um, with non-deterministic finite automaton um, is, is by far much, much simpler, much handier. In fact, the machine is much smaller um, than the... Um, um, the original machine, the set of states that I have here. So let me just, just one quick overview here. Um, the size of Q, the length of Q here is the length of Q sub 1 plus the length of Q sub 2 plus 1. So this is with NFA. With DFA, the length of Q is indeed Q sub 1 cross Q sub 2. The length of Q sub 1 Q sub 2, uh, cross Q sub 2. So, for example, if Q sub 1 had two states and Q sub 2 had 5, then Q 
queue will have eight states. Whereas if Q sub 1 had two states and Q sub 2 had five states, then this guy would have ten states. In fact, let's make this actually better. If Q sub 1 had four states and five states, then it would have ten states with the non-deterministic, whereas with the deterministic, it would have 20 states. And, uh, and, and obviously, um, um, the proof was, was much easier to understand and to fathom um, compared to the, to, the, to, the, to the proof with the DFAs. Um, so, so this is um, the, first, the first closure property. Um, that the set of finite automaton, uh, uh, the set of regular languages is closed under the union operation. And uh, next, I'm going to show you um, the proof of uh, concatenation. And remember, we couldn't even 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 approach the concatenation proof uh, with the DFAs. Um, so, so we will uh, take a look at that in the next um, um, video.